So if I asked you to draw the product in this reaction, you likely wouldn't have any problems doing that, right? But if I ask you to do the same for this molecule, I'm willing to bet many of you would freeze up not knowing what to do. But it's actually fairly simple. Let me show you. So when it comes to the electrophilic aromatic substitution in heterocycles, you're most typically going to be seeing five and six membered rings. And when it comes to five membered rings, the most common ones are going to be pyrrol, furane, and thiophene. I will collectively show all of them as this five membered ring with an X, where X is my hetero atom. Now, when it comes to six-membered rings, however, there are several different options that you might see, but most likely the only one that you are actually going to see is going to be pyridine. And when it comes to reactions of aromatic compounds, any kind of aromatic compounds, whether they are regular aromatics or heterocyclic compounds like I have over here, the key is always going to be in resonance. So let's look at our five-membered heterocycle and draw some resonance structures for it first. I will start by taking the electron pair on my heteroatom and moving it around, so that's going to give me the following resonance contributor. Then from there, I can move my electrons one more time, making the following contributor, and I can also have a whole set of contributors if I do it in the other direction. But what these resonance structures tell me the important thing is that we are going to have a partial negative charge, the excess of the electron density on the carbons of our heteroaromatics, which essentially means that all these molecules are going to be very electric electron reach, and using the electrophilic aromatic substitution terminology, that means that all these rings are activated, which also means that they are going to be very reactive towards the electrophiles. Now, if on the other hand I look at my six-membered ring, well, I can do some resonance there as well, but now, because of the electronic configuration of that molecule, the heteroatom is actually going to be pulling the electron density towards itself, which means that once I start drawing my resonance contributors, I will see that now I actually have a plus charge sitting on my ring, giving me in a nutshell a structure looking like this, where instead of delta minuses, I have delta plus on the carbons of the ring itself, which means that my ring is actually electron poor, and in terms of the electrophilic aromatic substitution, the ring is deactivated, which means that the molecule overall is going to be unreactive. So remember, five-membered rings are very reactive in electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions, while the six-membered heterocycles, on the other hand, are unreactive in those reactions. Unreactive to the point where pyridine, the six-membered ring that I have on the screen right now, can be used as a solvent in typical electrophilic aromatic substitutions, and we're not going to be scared that that guy is going to mess up our reaction. That's how unreactive they typically are. But reactivity aside, another important thing for us to know is where exactly the reaction is going to happen, or in other words, the regioselectivity of this reaction. So let's go back to a five-membered ring and do a typical electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction, which in this case is just a simple halogenation. Well, the first step in any halogenation reaction is going to be the formation of my electrophile, which in this case is going to look like like that, and once that electrophile attacks my aromatic ring, we can show this attack like this, I'm going to have two different options where that attack can happen. My option number one is going to put chlorine uh, on my aromatic ring right next to my heteroatom. So now, if I start drawing my resonance structures, I can show these electrons going over here, giving me the following contributor, and then from this contributor, I can show that my oxygen has some electron pairs on it, like that, and then from here, I will show that the oxygen can also participate in this resonance, giving me the following resonance contributor over here. Now, my second option is going to be 
chlorine attacking the other position a little bit further away from my hetero atom. Well, in this case, like before, if I start drawing my resonance contributors, then I will see that the only viable possibility is going to be the resonance using the oxygen over here. So I'm going to take the electrons on my oxygen, move them towards my carbocation, giving me the uh, following resonance contributor, and that's about it when it comes to the reasonable resonance contributors. Now, analyzing the both sets of my resonance contributors here, I see that the major contributor in the first case is the one with the plus on the oxygen because we have a full octet there. And likewise, for my bottom set, the major contributor is also the one with the plus on the oxygen, again, due to the complete full octet. Now, in this case, the important distinction between my sets is going to be that in the first case, I have three resonance structures, while in the second set, I only have two reasonable resonance structures, which means that my option one is going to be a more stable intermediate, and if this is the more stable intermediate, we are going to choose that one for the prediction of our product, meaning that the final product in this reaction is going to be molecule looking like this. And so by doing this resonance analysis here, we can easily see that when it comes to our five-membered heterocycles, the substitution goes into this and this position in that ring. Of course, if you have other groups on your uh, molecule, those other groups could potentially influence influence your substitution as well, so you would have to do a more involved analysis, but in the easiest case, that's what we are going to be seeing. Now, moving on to a six-membered ring, well, in that case, we can do a similar analysis. So here is a six-membered ring with a pyridine. If I do the same reaction here, my step number one is, of course, going to be to make my electrophile here, just like in the previous case. Then, this electrophile going to react with my aromatic ring, and now I'm actually going to see three different options. My option number one, like in the previous case, is going to be the one where the electrophile attacks the atom right next to my heteroatom. Then, from here, I can start drawing my resonance structures by moving the electrons around like so, giving me the following contributor. Then, I can take this contributor and I can move electrons one more time, like so, giving me the following contributor, and that would be it when it comes to the reasonable contributors here. I will remind you that the electron pairs on the nitrogen here cannot really participate in the resonance because they are in the orthogonal plane at 90 degrees to the plane of conjugation, so there is nothing you can do with those electrons. Now, Going back to my resonance contributors here, I can spot the problem with them right away. This nitrogen over here is a six electron species. Within the scope of organic chemistry, we have never seen anything outside of carbon and maybe boron that can have six electrons on the outer shell. And even carbons are quite unstable. Carbocations are far from stable. So whenever we have a carbocation, which would be a six electron open shell species, we try to do something about that. Now, when it comes to more electronegative heteroatoms like, let's say, nitrogen or oxygen, those guys, when they have an open shell, that is major bad news, which means that the resonance contributor like that is going to spoil the entire set. That is going to be your fly in your bottle of ointment. We do not want to see any of that. So, if I move to my other option, let's say the one where the chlorine is one atom removed, well, in this case, if I start drawing my resonance structures, one is going to uh, use my electrons from the pi bond and look like this. Then from this point, I can move my electrons like this, giving me the following intermediate. And here, although I don't have anything super stable, I still have three resonance contributors Overall, those three resonance contributors are all open shell, and I do have open shell on this carbon, this carbon, and that carbon over here. The open shell carbons, the six electron carbons, are not as bad as the uh, six electron heteroatoms like nitrogen. So, while these resonance contributors here are not necessarily absolutely awesome for us, they're still much better than what we have in option one.
And of course, when we move to the option 3, well, we are going to have the same problem. We are going to have a, a nitrogen with 6 electrons and one of the resonance contributors, so option 3 is not a good option for us either. Which means that in this case, we are going to go with the lesser of uh, 3 evils with the option 2, and our final product is going to look like this. So when it comes to our 6 member drinks, and most typically you are going to be seeing period the substitution is going to go into the third position from the hetero atom, which means it is this guy and this guy over here. And again, if you have other substituents in your molecule, they can potentially influence the directing of the substitution here as well, so you do need to do your resonance analysis. So as you can see, the resonance here is the key. And if you're ever in doubt, just draw and assess those resonance contributors and you'll get your answer. Same way how we dealt with the directing effects from the electron donating and withdrawing groups. Same thing here, exactly. It is as simple as that. Now, armed with the knowledge of the resonance, where do you think the electrophilic aromatic substitution is going to happen in this molecule? Is it going to be position number one, position number two, or position number three. Let me know in the comments below what you think. And as always, thank you for watching. If you learned something new today, remember to boop the like button and leave me a comment. Check out this video next, and I'll see you next time.